Uh, I am so glad you guys are uh, worshiping today. It's 4th of July weekend. Uh, it's time when we celebrate freedom, right? Independence, right? Yeah. So I'm glad you guys are. And I don't know if you guys realize this, but the church is a great place to be. And that's why I'm glad you're here. And I love coming to church and being here with all of you. And I hope you guys are enjoying it too. And Jesus talks about why it's important for us to gather. And we're going to look at the Gospel of Matthew today. And it says this. And I'll read it. You guys can follow along up there. You can follow along uh, in your insert, in your Bible, whatever you like. Jesus says, Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. That's uh, Jesus' word for us this morning. And as I said, the church is a great place to be. Why? You know, don't just take my word for it. You guys gotta, you guys gotta think on your own, right? I say the church is a great place to be. You guys should be asking. So let me, let me hear you guys say it. Why? Did, you, did everybody ask that question? Let me hear you ask it again. Why? That's right. The church is a great place to be. One, because the church is a place to relax. Okay? The church is a place to relax. But here's the problem. We're so used to pretending to be something we are not outside the church that when we come into the church, we keep pretending in the same way. Think about that. We are so used to pretending out in the world. And the challenge for all of us is stop pretending to be something that you're not. Okay? We waste way too much energy pretending to be something we're not to please people. We do. And even for myself, I like to think, I think to myself, I go, somebody, I was just having lunch with somebody, one of, you know, our young adults this weekend, and we were eating, and you know, I kind of, after, after the meal, I kind of reclined on my chair, because it was a pretty good meal, and he's like, whoa, Pastor Fred, you're getting a little tummy, I said, hey, hey, where are you looking, eyes are up here, eyes are up here, whoa, come on, and I said, yo, he's right though, right, I, and I tried to suck it in, but it's like, I can't, I gotta let it go, this is who I am. And I know I'll never be like that again. The good news is this. You don't have to try to impress other people. And I want to challenge you guys. Just be yourself. That's the greatest person that you can be. Yourself. Just be yourself. Stop trying to please everybody. Even God can't please everybody. Did you know that? That's hard, hard thing to say, but... God cannot please everybody. In fact, Jesus couldn't please everybody. There is only one person that you should think about being. You know who that is? You that God made. The, the, each person right here, yourself. God made you so unique, and that's the only thing that you can try to be. Not somebody else. Not to impress somebody else, not to please somebody else, but just to try to be the best person that God made you be. Do you guys remember that passage from Psalm 139? It says, I praise you, God, for I am fearfully and what? Wonderfully made. That's what that writer said. I am made by the hands of God, and when I was made, God himself, with his own hands, was like, Oh, I better be careful. Right? I'm making my child here. I gotta be careful. That's what it means to be fearfully. And look at you. You are wonderfully made. Each and every one of us here. You are wonderfully made. Here are a couple questions for you to think about. As I say, the church is a great place to relax. In your own personal life, outside these doors. Who do you try to impress? Think about that. Who are you trying to impress all the time? And why? 
Why are you trying to please that person? Think about it. Okay? I said uh, the question. Here's the, here's the second part. The church is a great place to be. You guys got to say it. Why? Sorry, Tony. And you, you guys didn't sound very curious. The church is a great place to be. Why? <laughs> okay. <laughs> because the church is a great place to share. It is. The church is a great place to share. Once again, human problem, our problem. We think to share means that we are too touchy-feely. And a lot of us, we don't like to be touchy-feely, especially men. Even women. You know, with people you don't know, you don't want to be touchy-feely. You don't want to show what's going on in your heart. A lot of guys think it's a sign of weakness. Right? When I share how I feel, go, oh, oh my gosh, he's kind of a wimpy guy or something like that. Right? No? So because of that, we don't like to share. I want to let you guys know, sharing is part of being in God's community. We are called to share with each other. What do we share? I want to challenge you guys to share, share some love with each other. Okay? Just a little bit of love. I know that uh, we've got a, today we're having a grilled hot dog day after this. I think that's why maybe Sam's opening and closing these windows but, uh, so that the smoke doesn't come in. But we got a couple of uh, men who are volunteered to grill the hot dog. When we have these, like, grilling days, does anybody really say thank you to Andy and Uncle Rick? I'll, you know, try to share, just share a little bit of love. When you see Uncle Rick or un Uncle Andy, just go over and say, look them straight in the eye. Because when you, when you talk to somebody, you got to look them straight in the eye, right? Because then they know you mean it. You gotta, look them in the eye and say, thank you. <laughs> and, 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 and if for some reason the spirit is moving you, just say, let me give you a little hug. <laughs> give him a little hug. And I will bet you that you will just warm their heart. You will just make them feel like, dang it, I'm going to grow every single hot dog in this church. Right? That's how they're going to feel. When you show just a little, share a little bit of yourself. When you just share a little bit of love. Right? When you look at somebody, just look in their eyes and be able to say, I am glad that you are here. Right? Can you say that? I am glad that you're here. Because you know what? Jesus is glad. God is glad that each and every person in this room is here today. And you are the messenger of that. Turn, be able to look at people and say, I'm so glad that you are here. That's sharing yourself. And another point of sharing is this. Jay always kind of opens our hearts with that music. The band, I want to thank the youth band for doing, joining Jay. When's the last time you just opened up your heart and shared something with God. A lot of us, we don't like to see weak even in front of God. And we don't want to just open up our hearts. We close it and we bury things in our heart. Things that are important, things that are hurting us, things that we're struggling with. When you come to church, take a moment, even if it's right now, even if you don't listen to me right now, just open up your heart. And share, share a little something with God. And be able to say, God, this is what's going on in my life. And I want to share it with you. And if that's a good experience, the challenge for all of us is share something with someone else. Share something with God. See how God listens to you. And there are plenty of people, even in this room, who want to listen to you. Who want to hear you. Who want to... Who want to experience just a little bit of yourself. Here's something good to share. And actually when I do premarital counseling, marriage counseling, relationship counseling, uh, and this is for young people too. For guys, you know, if you want to, if you're having a hard time finding a significant other, these are the questions that you got to, you got to write it down. Jerry, you need to write, be writing this stuff down. <laughs> you need to get it down. Right? And here's the question. And, and for couples too, people who I've been married 20, over 25 years, and I'm like, this stuff, you got to get it down, right? Be able to ask somebody significant and say, hey, 
What do you enjoy doing? What do you enjoy doing? If you can ask somebody that and just listen to them, you know, you're going to get to find out a lot about that. When my wife comes home, you know, she works hard, right? She works, sometimes works into the evening. I say, how was your day? And I just pause, and I got to listen. Give her that opportunity to share. And then and she opens up, and she shares her stuff with me. Second question that you can ask is, well, what do you, what do you not enjoy doing? And I think a lot of times people will kind of go on and on about this one. More than, what do you enjoy? There's so many things we don't enjoy about each day. Ask each other that. What, what did you not enjoy about today? That's sharing our heart with each other. And this is so important as Christians, whether it's in our home, in our church, we've got to find out what's going on in each other's lives. Why? Listen to what Galatians 6.2 says. It says, can, uh, let's have, let's have, uh, Melissa, I've never asked Melissa to do anything. Melissa, can you read that for us? Be loud. Okay. That's right. We are called to bear one another's burdens, to share each other's lives. That's what it means. Did you guys even know that there was a Jesus law? But what? There's no law in Jesus. But what does that say? What's the thing that Jesus wants us to do? Bear one another's burdens. That just simply means be nice to each other. Be nice to each other. Help each other. Be courteous. Right? If you know someone needs your help, go over there and do it. Give them a hand. It takes such a load off. I was helping my niece move this weekend. You know, she... I, I, Compared to other people, she hardly had anything. Right? She's working for AmeriCorps, she's got all broken furniture, you know, it's like, it's ghetto. I was like, oh man, I didn't. It is, right? It's all like that particle board furniture, right? And it's like all broken. <laughs> Bed, no frame, I don't know. And then, you know, two couple guys went over there and we moved it all in one, one move. My truck and another tiny little truck. We moved it all. And she, you know, but at the same time, if she didn't have a couple people, it would have been so much more difficult, right? But just a couple guys makes it so much more simple. And I would bet that your hand can lift the burden of another person's life. And that's what we're called to do. The church is a great place to be. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, God. Let me hear you say it. The church is a great place to be. Why? Because the church is a great place to renew. We've got to come to this place and renew. Once again, our problem is when we make a mistake or do something wrong, we don't like to admit it. We don't like to let people know about it. We don't like to show people that we're weak, that we can't make mistakes. Because I'm, I'm a bet. So many people in this place, you, you know how to cover your A. Mm -hmm. Right? You have been doing it all the time at work. Just covering your butts. When you, when you do something wrong, you've got to make sure, oh, cover it up, make sure nobody knows. Right? I don't want to get the blame. But, when you come to church, I want to invite you guys. God knows who you are. God knows that you're not perfect. Just come as you are and have a time of renewal. Right? When we're tired, when we're feeling weak, just open up to God and say, God, this is who I am. I need your spirit to renew me. I need your spirit to refresh me. And some of us, we have lied a little bit during the week, we have done something, just like Jay said, we know people, and maybe ourselves, we've done something wrong during the week. What a great time to come and say, God, uh, I fell again this week. I give that fallenness, that brokenness to you. Just let me be that person that you want me to be. 
Let's just renew my spirit today. The church is a great place to renew our commitment, to renew ourselves, because God wants us to live in peace with ourselves, with each other, right? That's what God wants. It's a, this is a great place to check our priorities and to set, uh, renew our priorities. Set priorities, renew our priorities. Right? Without coming to church on a regular basis, I will bet that things are getting turned upside down in your life. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? Our priorities get all messed up. We need that weekly reminder. And I think that's, that's the cycle that, that we have in our weekly schedule. That we need to come before God every, every week and to be able to say, Oh, let me unload after these five days of work, uh, even after a Saturday. Let me come to church. Let me kind of have a moment of reflection. Let me set my priorities straight. Let me unload on God. Let me put it at the cross and say, God, renew me today. During the week, when our priorities get messed up, we end up chasing after things that promise to make our life better. I think that's what we're doing during the week. What's going to make my life better? And then we just end up chasing it. But what we find is that the stuff that we are chasing doesn't necessarily make our life better. It just makes our life busier. Makes our life more full of stuff. What do we do? What can we do? Here's a little video clip. And it's a video clip of people who are just chasing after stuff because they think it's the treasure of life. So let's take a look. You guys remember this? There's the treasure.
something that you need to rehear. <coughs> Second question is, what commitment do you need to renew? Have you made a commitment and you need to renew that? Maybe it's just a commitment to a friend, to be a friend that you need to renew. Maybe it's a commitment to your spouse. Maybe you made that commitment with, you know, for Gene and me, it's like 25 years ago. Maybe you need to renew that commitment in your heart. For some of you, it may be just a recommitment of you to enjoy the life that God has given you. What recommitment do you need? As I said before, you are not going to please everybody, let alone impress anybody. And the passage that we read today, what happened, the reason that Jesus says that is because right before, Jesus is talking to all the all to the crowd, and he says, you know what? John the Baptist came, and he was a good man. He was a pious man. He was a spiritual man. He didn't drink anything that was bad. He didn't eat anything that was bad. And he dedicated himself to live in the mountains. He was wearing animal skin, right? He was like a holy man. And you guys rejected him. And Jesus said, and then I came. Because you guys said you wanted a God who was close to you. I came. I lived with you. I ate with you. I drank with you. And you guys are rejecting me too. And Jesus says, I can't please you guys. Even Jesus can't please. And Jesus says, all of you people who are just tired of trying to impress, please everybody, I will let you know. Come to me, and I will give you peace. When you live with me, when you walk with me, when you live each day with me, you will have peace. 